So today I'm going to tell you how I did my SDR build when I combined it with the hammer that up converter. I'll show you the basics of how I did it. Um, I took a lot of the pictures years ago when I constructed it originally, so there won't be any actually videos of the construction itself, a lot of it, but um, I'll explain how I did it and uh, I'll show you some of what you can receive uh, with it when you put it to use. Now when I constructed my uh, up converter and my um, RTL SDR, I put them in a Hammond case. That's um, a 120 millimeter uh, by 100 millimeter Hammond aluminum case, and uh, it helps to you know block out a lot of the RF noise uh, that it may or may not pick up. You can kind of get an idea from the inside here. Here's where the antenna input is. Uh, I've actually soldered it directly to the up converter board, and then the connection between the up converter board and the dongle, which has been removed from its original case, I hard soldered that as well, and I have it run into the uh, original connection there so I didn't have to mess with the dongle board because it seems to be a lot more delicate than the SDR the up converter board and so uh, basically what I use for a, a, a RF shield for this actually I just cut this up from a um, a pie tin and I taped it down with some foil tape um, I don't know how much extra RF protection it protects for the dongle but the whole thing is susceptible to uh, a lot of FM Intermod. Uh, these things in general are susceptible to it, and I wanted to reduce the amount of noise between the two boards as much as possible. So here's the converter uh, in and out switch uh, that uh, allows you to put it in so that you can listen to the uh, to uh, HF, and then uh, when it's out, you can listen to all the other frequencies which this dongle is capable of. This dongle in particular is capable of frequencies from about 24 megahertz up to about 1.7 gigahertz. Uh, you can see over here I have a grounding uh, post here which I soldered direct wires directly to the uh, dongle board as well as a direct wire to the uh, up converter board and then I put them directly to the grounding um, post which um, is obviously obviously connected to the, the Hammond case as well that I put the whole thing in. So here's the cable I came up with to power the up converter and the SDR from uh, both from my laptop. I'm using a one USB cable that goes to the uh, USB type 1 port for the uh, up converter and combined it with a standard USB cable uh, that's for the uh, RTL SDR and I just kind of tape them together to kind of make it all neat and everything and then uh, both of these are tied together with just electrical tape right near where they both go into the two USB ports for my laptop. Now you can see here's where the cable for the uh, up converter goes in. Just plug it in like that and then uh, I'll plug in the uh, USB cable for the, the dongle, SDR dongle. Now the reason I connected it to the, the individual boards as I did, this one with uh, an F type connector, is so that I can easily remove it if needed. To, needed. Um, basically each of these boards is secured inside the box with a couple of plastic um, plastic feet and it's just all hot glued in. The, this board has three or four of these plastic feet in it and the dongle board has a couple of those in it too in uh, free areas underneath and uh, they were just hot glued in there to keep it secure. but also to allow it to be removed relatively easy if necessary. Um, this can just uh, unscrew from here and this can just disconnect from that board and this board will come out with relative ease um, and this board as well. Now the way that I have these two end cables set up is so that uh, they easily plug into uh, the two USB ports here on the side of my laptop. Um, they're right next to each other and this whole assembly makes it uh, quite easy to put in like that. So I'll go ahead and plug them in. And that's basically how it plugs in, very quick and easy. And uh, we can see that both of the uh, power lights on the SDR boards have come on. There's the blue one for the dongle, and there's a green one uh, for the up converter. Um, on the case, on the cover of the, of the box, I drilled two 1 16th inch holes directly above where the LEDs were so that uh, it can be seen easily from the outside. Basically, once it's plugged in, um, it's ready to go and uh, we can listen to some radio with it. So here I have the SDR connected to the antenna cable which uh, is just by this uh, 
simple F connector and the cable. And before I actually go into the SVR, um, unless I'm listening to FM, I have it, it uh, attached to two FM traps. Um, I actually gang two of them together because it makes the null a bit deeper and blocks out a lot more of the FM. But uh, because I'm close to uh, 7 to 10 really high power FM stations, they're all less than 10 miles away, I get a lot of FM intramod. And these two um, FM traps bring it down anywhere from 35 to 60 decibels. So um, if you're going to play around with these SDRs, and probably SDRs in general, you're going to want some kind of FM trap um, as a front end uh, to get rid of a lot of that intramod. Unless, of course, you're, you're DXing with some of the FM. But uh, I have two of these gang together and it really helps a lot to keep out the inner mod. So here's the entire long wave band from the DC spike uh, created by the uh, SDR all the way over to 560 AM. Uh, we can listen to the signals in here. Here's uh, 560 AM uh, with a normal AM bandwidth of uh, 10 kilohertz. And then uh, if we go right to uh, 60 kilohertz here, uh, and then change it to carrier wave, we can hear the 60 kilohertz time signal. So here's most of the uh, NDB band. Here's uh, local NDB at 400 kilohertz here. And this is the whole DGPS band down here. These are probably all uh, weak NDBs coming in. And uh, here's another local uh, strong NDB, uh, right about uh, 260. Uh, pop over there. And uh, you listen to that, you, uh, the, the best way to do it is to uh, bring the, uh, the signal down, get as close as you can to it, and you can move it in with this over here. And then you bring the audio down to a short group, a short uh, bandwidth so that it gets rid of all the noise uh, but it makes it a lot easier to hear yeah, I, I'm listening to it in double sideband mode right now but anyway that's most of the long wave band uh, you can see here so a lot better at night and of course there's also the AM band yeah, you can see uh, multiple stations coming in all at once. Um, if you zoom completely out, you can actually see the entire band. But uh, you get the idea. Zoom out a little more. And you can actually see the entire AM band now. You can of course listen to various time signals. Here's a uh, time signal at 2.5 megahertz. Here's the 5 megahertz time signal. megahertz time signal along with some shortwave stations shortwave signal at uh, 9.98 megahertz another one at 9.870 megahertz And here's the 14.670 megahertz CHU Canadian time signal. You can of course listen to shortwave signals. Shortwave signal signal at 15.121 megahertz another one nearby it 15190 pretty much the entire CB band you can get the whole thing at once And here, of course, is the FM radio band. Of course, I 
I don't have the band trap FM filter in, otherwise you wouldn't see all those signals. You see several here. There's one there, 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 there. And this is the uh, digital uh, bands off the side. And if I zoom in over here, you can see that you can also uh, decode up in this area. You can see it decoding the additional information that's in the uh, high definition IBOC, whatever you want to call it, to digital sidebands. You can't do this in AM with SDR Sharp, but you can do it in FM. Uh, and get an idea of some of the capabilities. And then there's air traffic control, of course. The railroad band you can get um, with another FM antenna. So of course one of the things you can listen to is weather radio around the 162.4, 162.5 band. You can see channel 7 here, uh, 654, uh, 3, and then skip 1. You can barely see there's something on uh, channel 2 there, but you can pick them up pretty well if you have the right antenna. Another program that you can use is uh, TV Sharp, and uh, this takes the dongle, and you can watch uh, uh, analog TV cameras. This happens to be my baby monitor for my son's room. It takes a lot of tweaking to get it in, and obviously it's not a perfect image right now, but um, that's how well I've been able to get it to work. But it's called TV Sharp, and it works uh, with the dongle as well. And this is uh, like a 920 megahertz baby cam. Another thing you can do with a, a, an SDR dongle is track aircraft using the ADS-B signal that comes from many airplanes. You can use a program like ADS-B Sharp, um, which takes the signals from the airplanes and translates them so that a program like ADS-B Scope can plot them uh, airplanes on a map, as well as tell you all sorts of different uh, details like tail numbers, signal, altitude, speed, and whatnot. And, uh, they all work pretty well together. You have to have a, <clears throat> an ADS-B antenna for it to get it to work. But uh, that's another part of the project you can build and uh, that's quite fun. So <clears throat> you get a kind of an idea of what you can see with these uh, low-cost uh, SDR dongles. This one's from Nulek. Um, you can get them from various different places. Um, whether you combine them, uh, up converter and the dongle into one, or you use the dongle as is for the upper frequencies from about 28 to about 1.8 gigahertz, 28 megahertz to 1.8 gigahertz. Um, you can do it either way, have a lot of fun, you can see a lot of different things. I'd have to say that if I uh, combined the uh, up converter and the dongle into one box again, I'd probably run the USB power supply directly, I'd hardwire it from the uh, inputs on the dongle directly to the uh, up converter so I didn't have two cables. Uh, that might also help a little bit on RF noise. Also, uh, this, uh, this setup was made about three years ago, um, so th these dongles now, uh, the newer ones, the newer versions of these are a little bit more sensitive on the lower band, so not quite as good as a full setup radio that's set up for long wave or medium wave, such as the Hamlin here. Uh, the Hamlin is far more sensitive, or even one of these little uh, portable Texan PL380s, they're definitely more sensitive than these dongles, which of course are designed for the TV bands. Um, so, you know, you can see why the sensitivity is the way it is. But uh, really good for playing around, good for the higher um, VHF, UHF, and uh, gigahertz bands. Um, you can go, you know, with the up converter, you can go all the way from 60 kilohertz all the way up to 1.7, 1.8 gigahertz, depending on the individual dongle. You can get cell phone if you so desire. Of course, we all know that's illegal. Uh, but you can see them on here as well. Right now, it's just the AM band. So, um, you can have a lot of fun with these, low cost. Um, and uh, there's a lot of other upgrades available now than even the Hammond Up when I got it. Um, so, uh, you can have a lot of fun with these. Uh, I hope you got something from this, and uh, maybe it helped give you some ideas of how to build 
your low-cost SDR.